Hello everyone. Today's video is going to be slightly different than normal. We'd on a regular day be doing some chemistry, uh, but lately it's been extremely cold. It's the middle of winter here um, and it's been raining the past few days. So the chemistry has had to be on hold for a little while. Um, in the meantime, um, I'm going to make this little video here because I have an item uh, that I think might interest at least some of you. Recently, I came into possession of this thing. And what this is, is a Kurta calculator. Or, as far as I know, it's the only pocket-sized, completely mechanical calculator um, that has ever been made. You may have heard of these things before. They are quite famous, I believe. Uh, but if you haven't, then I'm very happy to be the first one to show you one of these things. We have this thing in its original canister from the 1950s. You might guess that this thing has seen quite a bit of use over the years from the state of the canister it's in. Um, you'd be right, this was given to me by a relative of mine um, who used to use it back in the day um, extremely extensively um, in the field uh, because that is its intended purpose as you know a, a calculating device for use uh, where you don't have access to a lot of pen and paper. And this was, of course, prior to the introduction of electronic calculators, which pretty much killed the industry of pocket mechanical calculators. Anyway, I just wanted to get it out and show it to you, show you how it works, because I think it's extremely cool. It's one of my favorite possessions. So we're going to get it out. Interestingly, the canister opens by screwing the top clockwise. And then over here... That's it. As you can see, the calculator itself is very cool. It has a very small form. It's very compact um, and it has a whole great deal of functionality that we'll get to in just a minute. Um, if we have a look underneath, we can see uh, where it's made and everything like that. We even have a serial number down the bottom, which if we look up, uh, tells us that this exact model here uh, was manufactured in 1954. So it's been around for quite some time and impressively, it still works perfectly. So just for a really quick video, uh, I think we'll just do a short demonstration of some of the things that we can use this Kurta calculator to actually do. At first, when you look at this thing, it seems extremely complicated because there are a lot of moving parts. We have all of these sliders down the bottom here for inputting uh, various numbers. We have a switch on the side, which does something else. We have uh, this whole section up the top, which can move up and spin around. Uh, we also have this crank, which can be cranked, of course. It also moves up and down. We have uh, this hook as well which can be dragged around in a circle. So all of these different parts of the machine have different functions uh, depending on the calculation that you're doing with the calculator. Anyway, we'll start with just adding two numbers, I think. I think that's the best way to understand how this thing uh, ticks. So what we do is we start down the bottom here with these sliders. This is where we input uh, all of the numbers that we're gonna calculate with. It's like the keypad of a standard calculator that you get nowadays. So if I put in a number like 5,392, uh, what we can do is input this into the calculator by turning this crank. And if you watch these digits down here, if I get this in focus, when I turn this crank, you can see by doing that, I've added the 5,392 to the output display of the calculator here, 5,392. Now, if I want to add another number to this, all I need to do is put another number into the input slots here. So I've got the number 4,169. And to add that number to our running total that we've got up the top here, all I need to do is make one more turn of the crank. So by adding those two numbers together, we have arrived at the result of 9,561, which, I mean, feel free to check, but I'm pretty sure that's the right answer when we add together those two numbers. Once we're finished with our calculation, uh, we need to clear the machine in order to do another calculation, of course. So uh, what we can start by doing is clearing the input 
and then to clear um, the output here, our running total, what we can do is we lift up this section of the calculator ever so slightly and we use this pin and drag it all the way around. Watch the number there. If I get my finger out of the way so you can see what's happening, it all resets to zero. Now you probably think if the machine can add two numbers together, um, it should also be able to subtract two numbers and you're right, it definitely can. So the way we do this is, again, we input some number into the machine. I'm gonna do 12,845. We're gonna input that into that top row as before, 12,845 on the output there. And then if we want to subtract another number, say I want to subtract 5,294 from that number, all we need to do is instead of turning the crank as we would normally do for an addition, we need to pull the crank up just a little bit so that we can see that gray bar. And when we turn the crank this time, uh, this looks rather cool, um, we subtract that number from our input, uh, from the number that we had originally up there. So our original number, subtracting our number that we've just inputted there, gives us the result of 7,551. Technically, that's all this machine is actually able to do, addition and subtraction of numbers. Um, even subtraction in reality is addition because the way that this machine performs subtraction is by addition of the nines complement. Uh, but don't worry about that. Basically, by just applying addition and subtraction in an iterative fashion, uh, we're able to get the functions of multiplication, division, and a whole range of other things um, to make this machine uh, extremely powerful as a calculator. So to show you multiplication next, I think that's the next step after addition and subtraction. We, of course, reset the machine by raising that part on the top and taking that ring all the way around the circle. To do multiplication, say we want to multiply a big number like 3,971, and I want to multiply that number by eight, all I need to do, you might have guessed, is turn the crank eight times. And by doing that, uh, we have effectively added 3,971 to the output string um, eight times. So we've done 3,971 multiplied by eight, giving us 31,768. With multiplication as well, this is where the other numbers, uh, the white band on the top, come into play uh, because what this does is count how many times you've turned the crank. So in this case, we've turned it eight times, and as you can imagine, if you're turning the crank quite a few times, uh, you might lose count, and this is a very useful part of the machine. Things get even more interesting if we want to multiply even bigger numbers. So let's keep 3,971, let's reset the machine, and let's say we want to multiply 3,971 by 5,401. We could turn the crank 5,401 times, but at that point, it's probably quicker and easier to just do the calculation on paper. So the Curta calculator has um, an interesting piece of functionality. What you can do is, instead of just adding 3,971 to the units column of the output, what we can do is we can lift up this section of the calculator and turn it around so that we're instead adding into the thousands column. And I'll show you how that works. You can see now, by adding 3,971 to the thousands column, we now have 3,971,000 in our output. So what we can do is turn that five times total that's multiplied it by 5,000. And as we said before, we wanted to multiply by 5,401. So let's move into the hundreds column, turn it four times. 
the tens column doesn't need anything and the units column just needs a one. So what we've done there is multiplied 3,971 and we've effectively turned the crank 5,401 times. So we've multiplied those two numbers together to give us this number here, which is 21,447,371, which I think was pretty quick for a mechanical calculation. You can of course multiply by even bigger numbers. I mean, the input here has a total of eight digits to choose from, so you could multiply, add or subtract or divide numbers all the way up to 99,999,999, and your answers, right, there are, I think, 11 digits. So you could go all, all the way up to, I think that's the tens of billions. Of course, if you also just imagine the presence of a decimal point at some point in our input and in our output here, you can mark these things off with these little sliders. Say we wanted to put a decimal point right there. Um, that's where I'd put the little slider and we could pretend that we're adding, subtracting or multiplying decimals and everything would still work in exactly the same way. Anyway, the last thing I wanted to show you on this thing was division uh, because it's still a pretty easily doable calculation and it's not so complicated like taking a square root or something that I would struggle to explain it. So um, let's say we want a really big number. Let's go 491,723 as our input number. Let's stick that into our output. You can see that right there, I think, if the camera focuses. 491,723. And before we do our division, what I'm going to do is reset just the white band of output digits. And I'm going to flick this switch before clearing our input. Now, to do division, what we need to do, it's like multiplication where we did iterative um, addition. Division is iterative subtraction. So we need to set up for subtraction. Now, the reason we flipped this little switch here is because what it does is reverse the count on the white band of digits here. Remember, this was the thing that helped us count how many times we turned the crank. When we're doing subtraction, we need to flip this switch because uh, we need to still count how many times we turn the crank. If we forget to flip this switch, um, instead, we still get a subtraction on this band of numbers as well. So instead of registering a turn of the crank as one turn of the crank, um, this counter would ordinarily recognize a subtraction as a negative turn of the crank. So by flipping this switch, uh, we're able to count how many times we turn it. So what I want to do is divide this number, 491,723, by, let's go with 67. And I want to say how many times 67 fits into 491,723. So I can already tell that we're going to be able to subtract 67 from the thousands column uh, without anything going wrong. So let's start doing that. If the camera focuses, And at that point, we can see uh, in the thousands there, we've got about 22. Um, and we want to be subtracting 67,000, so we can't go any further. We move down and continue subtracting until we can go no further. 26, that's not quite enough. So let's continue moving down. 61, again, that's not quite enough for 67. So let's move down again. Right, and 10. So that's all we're left with there. That's going to be the remainder of our calculation. And I've forgotten what our original number was, but in taking that number and dividing it by 67, the count on the white band here is our answer. So that is 7,339, 
with 10 as a remainder. Now that we're done, um, we might as well reset the thing to its original state. So we'll reset our input, put the crank back to addition mode, flick that switch back to the regular state, and again, uh, we will remove all of our answer from the output. And that is basically all I wanted to show you. So that's the basic functionality of the Curta calculator. Um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with it. Um, it also, of course, has a bunch of other functions like um, square roots, cubing things, and so on. Uh, but they get progressively more complicated as the calculations become more complicated. So I won't bother showing you that. I hope you enjoyed having a look at how that thing works. I would definitely recommend if you're interested um, looking into how this thing works um, on the internals of it uh, because it is fascinating. Um, it's also very interesting how it was manufactured and especially the man who designed this thing uh, because he pretty much designed the whole thing um, while held in a concentration camp in the Second World War. Uh, so incredible story there um, and I would encourage you to look into that but I'll leave all that to you. So we'll stick this away all we need to do is tuck that little hook um, in a little bit and stick it back in the canister. And that's it. I'll hopefully see you in the near future when we get back to some chemistry, but until then, I'll see you later.